Ladies and gents, welcome to the Forza Racing Championship Series 1 Recap Show. My name is Bravo, and I'm so happy to be joining you for the very first time here at the Forza RC. We got a great set of shows planned for you today. Not only are we going to be recapping the first four rounds of Series 1, but also going to be getting into some team racing, the first time you've seen that since the preseason Invitational, and of course, looking ahead to the Series 1 playoffs. But as a special treat, the guys from TX3 are here in the studio with us. They're going to be not only talking to us about Series 1 so far, but also racing live from the studio. The Forza Racing Championship Series 1 recap show starts right now. And that's right, it's time for my favorite part of the week. That's right, it's the Wednesday showdown. Nope, we're done with all that because we're going to have some fun today. We're going to be doing some team racing. We're going to be talking about the upcoming playoffs alongside Ali Tack. I'm Scott Cole, and newcomer, a.k.a. you guys will know him as Flip Mode. Andy joins the desk. What do you think about all this, man? Uh, this, is, this is exciting. I mean, we're about to head on to the most exciting part of Forza. I mean, this is what everyone is here for, and they're practicing, and they're going to be here in seven days. Seven days. Super cool. Super cool. It's crunch time. All of these drivers have worked so hard throughout Series 1, piling up leaderboard points, climbing up that global ranking, and now we find out who's the fastest. We've got someone in the studio we've been waiting to see for a little while, right? Hard BR. That's right. He's been really dominating Latin America, but now we got him here today. Let's take a look at some of the teams that you're gonna be seeing rocking and rolling out there today. We talked about the TX3 boys, they're already here. JSR is gonna have Rossi Commando and Mitch. TPR is gonna be bringing Chemical, Zermatt and Davy Skills, and then F4H with Venom, Revs, and Dino. Those are the teams that we're gonna have here in this morning session. We're gonna have a little bit more coming up in the North America session later on tonight. But I'm really excited. These are the cream of the crop teams, especially coming in from EMA. They are the fastest drivers out there. All the teams are taking their top lineups here. Mitch, what can he do, the young upstart? Uh, he's been on fire lately. So this is a guy who's actually gotten faster as we've gotten deeper and deeper into this season. And I like where he's headed. Well, when you look at these teams, uh, I don't even know who to favorite. Does TX3 have any sort of advantage with them being physically all three together here in Seattle? I'll be staring at them throughout the entire event. Uh, I think that probably by race two, we'll start to smell them a little bit in the studio. <laughs> uh, this place is going to start to get some nervous energy in it. They're looking really at, relaxed for now, though, so it doesn't seem to have phased them too much. All right, well, without further delay, let's get right into the racing today. We are not going to be really messing around. We're going to have some fun time today. I'm so glad you guys decided to tune in here on a Wednesday with us. Let's go back over to Bravo to talk about race one. Hey, thanks, Scott. Before we get into race one, we got to remind everyone that the race two polls are open for the car selection there. You're going to be choosing between two vehicles, of course. It's going to be the 92 Ford Escort RS Cosworth Forza Edition or the 2012 Dodge Challenger SRT8392. Two very different cars there, right? You got a Hemi V8 rear wheel drive up against a four wheel drive turbo straight four. So we will be looking to see what goes on there. But let's go ahead and also talk about the race. One poll results, poll results you guys have been voting on at watch.forzarc.com. Of course, the poll was wet or dry at Silverstone, and wet just edges it out a bit. There are those who say that the sun never set on the British Empire. I think those who have raced at Silverstone are going to wonder if the sun has ever risen upon it. Uh, a wet track, infamously wet. So you're going to see a lot, a lot more patience required on this famous circuit. Uh, you know, final overtaking maneuvers, specifically into T16, we're going to want to watch out for those, but let's talk about this track. Everyone knows about it. Head to the UK here. Opens up with a diverse set of turns, big sweeping turns through the old start finish, and now up into the infamous and highly technical maggots and beckets. Like we said, big final overtake opportunity at T16, but even trickier in the wet. Also, with the combination of uh, all the high-speed corners and technical sections, expect uh, the Jaguar to maybe do well here. And speaking of that Jaguar, let's talk about these three cars here. You've got the 1988 
Jaguar number one, XJR9, the 91 Mazda number 55787B, and then the Nissan number 23, R91CP. Now, taking a look at these three cars, remember, these are all three 24-hour winners, but the Jaguar is the only one to win both Daytona and Le Mans in the number one and the number two. So we'll have to see how that plays out, boys. I appreciate it, Bravo. When you think about race number one, at least the boring track that is Silverstone, at least we got a little weather conditions. Sorry, dude, I, I've talked about it before. These guys are going to know this track. We have raced it several times in season one, but this is the first time that we throw a little inclement weather at them. Yeah, it's going to be wet at Silverstone. Got Group C cars. They're a driver's favorite. Everyone loves getting out there and getting behind the wheels. So those sort of ancient prototypes. They've got a raw power to them, haven't they? They got a raw power, but they also have some raw downforce to match right alongside that power. Let's take a look at the grid here for race number one. Mitchin's going to be out on Silverstone. Lightning's going to be out in front of the on the pole. They're going to have BR as the second, Rossi in third. So already the TX3 boys have three of the top four drivers there in the grid. Yeah, TX3 and JSR, all top six positions. So two teams leading the way into the event and two teams straggling. That will be F4H and TPR. Look at that, though. TPR, all three of the final positions on this grid. They need to pull something out here in the first race. Not really anything surprising here as we're looking at it, as we're ready to go here on Silverstone, headed over to the United Kingdom. And we already got some dark, foggy conditions here off the start. It's gonna be eight laps around Silverstone. That's 3.66 miles, 5.89 kilometers for those across the pond. And it is gonna be 18 turns, starting off dry, but eventually we're going to see some wet conditions here, Andy. Man, lightning already dropping down this order. I mean, this is, he was on pole. Where is he falling to? Yeah, JSR boy is just bullying him out there. Great through the first sector. So lightning feeling a little bit of the pressure coming down now towards Brooklands and Luffield for the first time. Uh, JSR blocking the way out and Venom right up there as well. Remember how far back Venom started from? Well, we've already seen some overtaking opportunities through six, seven and eight. In the past, as we've gone around this circuit, Cops, Maggots, and Beckett's, that's where we'll be headed next. But it's interesting to see. I want to take a moment to talk about who is in what car. We talked about the Jag, the 787B, and of course, that R91 Nissan. You got the Nissan, which is a very grip heavy car. You have the 787B that you know is built for speed. And then that Jag sort of gives you a little bit of both. Sort of your, your best all-around car, and it's interesting to see for these teams who has taken which vehicle. Yeah, it's always going to be a choice based on the character of the driver. If you're somebody who likes to square off a corner a little bit more, as the lunge there coming in. Is that hard BR sneaking up into what looks like fourth position uh, early on in this race, fighting with JSR Mitch? If you're going to take a fast car, you're going to be want to be someone who wants to square off corners, power down the straights. If you're going to take a grippy car, you want to run that speed through the apex, and that is a different character of driver. Back across the start finish line, Rossi out in front. Venom there in second for Commando, and there's Hard BR hanging around in third. He's got he's one of the fastest guys we have in the entire world of Forza, and he's got the fastest car that we have right now on the grid. The question is, can you keep it between the lines? I mean, this guy is seated number one in the world. He's the fastest out there on the leaderboard right now. This might be the first time that we're seeing him balancing with the top global talent. How do you think he's stacking up? I think he wants to do better here. I mean, he doesn't like to be behind Mitch. You can see him is a little uncomfortable right now. I think he feels he's faster than Mitch, but Mitch is taking up a lot of real estate on this track. Through the second lap here on Silverstone, race number one of the day. Some team racing as we continue to celebrate the conclusion of Series 1 as we head to the playoffs that start just 10 days from now here in Seattle. Some of the fastest drivers in the world will be ascending here in Washington. And we got some fast drivers out there today. Noticing a lot of the... When you look at the numbers that are on the grid, those aren't updating right now. So we'll try to keep you up to date about where folks are moving up and down the circuit. Yeah, absolutely right. Hard BR here, just heading up towards Stowe. Such a difficult corner up, over the crest, taking the right. Even harder when there's a car up your inside, and that's Commando taking Chemical. 
for what must be fifth position. Andy, what do you think about this team racing where you have, oh, so we, Commando got turned around, still caught up. That's also Zermatt over there on the right. That's super difficult. Zermatt trying to force his way past a car that had already spun. He needed to back off the throttle there, was getting greedy with the timing and uh, just making a bad accident even worse. Yeah, it looks like we had six or seven drivers get caught up in that carnage in lap number three. You can see Rev's right behind him. He made his way through. Yeah, that's shaking everything up here in the mid pack. But I really didn't see how Commando got turned around. I didn't know if that was on his own doing or if someone had forced him around. Knowing JSR Commando, I feel like that was probably an unforced error. <laughs> That's savage, Scott. That's savage. Yeah, call him as Commando. I see him. I mean, he, oh, there was a lot of cars around there, wasn't there? A lot, little bit of argy bargy in that back uh, chicane. But as they left club, well, who knows? Who knows? I'm sure the marshals will be having a really good look at that uh, after the race. You know, my favorite thing about the team racing is the three different vehicles on the track. I think you get different characteristics, different speeds. It causes for more drama. As you can see, Cena just getting a little bit loose there, Andy. Yeah, Senna, he's got to get this car sorted. He feels like he's falling further down this field, and, and we know he's a faster driver. We, we haven't seen as much of him in the racing championship so far this season, uh, but we know he's got the talent, but he wants to get up further up that field. Come on, Senna, let's do this. Yeah, Senna finally with the chance now to prove his worth on the global scale. The Forza Racing Championship definitely uh, one of the top racing well, top places to go racing on Forza Motorsport. And yeah, you're making a sign with your hands there, Andy. What's happening? Oh, I think I see some drips. I see some rain. Yeah, that rain started to come down here at Silverstone. Halfway through our first team race. Mentioned one of three today. Series one is in the books, but get a nice little treat here having some of the best players, you know, drivers in the world having to come through and work together as a team to find themselves on the podium. Yeah, we're just opening the first page of this book right now. We're looking at the first race uh, of the day. We've got three races in the first stream. There'll be another three races later on this evening with a second stream. Uh, all these different teams, lots and lots of chances to really butt heads, get uh, locked in with each other. So we'll find out who the fastest team is today. Let's go ahead and check with Brian here. That carnage. Yeah, we're looking at the, that incident between Chemical Commando and Zermatt. If you look at it in slow motion, we're going to rewind. I thought at first it was Chemical that maybe caused the problem, but if you look, Zermatt actually touches Commando, sends both of them into a spin. You can see it happening here. There's the touch. The right back fender sends Commando into that spin, and Chemical unfortunately gets caught up with both of them. And you can see the carnage that results as, uh, as a result of Zermatt touching Commando there. Making, making life hard for all three of them. Brian, I take everything back. Sorry, Commando. It was forced by Zermatt, who came up on that outside and, and forced him really on up into Chemical. So Chemical really nowhere for him to go as we take a look at some of his damage. Looks like he at least got through there clean. Yeah, very lucky there for Chemical. And keep in mind, that was two drivers from TPR, from the Total yeah. Performance Racing Team, knocked out really by that. Uh, and only one driver from JSR, that's Commando. Rossi still at the front. Lightning running in second. Hard BR in third. Still riding along with Chemical. There you see Paul, a.k.a. Revs. As they work their way around this fifth lap. Five of eight. As we come back to the start finish line. That's unfortunate, especially when you have two teammates come together. That really is going to make it hard as Revs gets off to the side. So as these conditions have come down, Andy, the grip is becoming less and less. These guys continue to push it like they did in the early laps. No assists here. Traction control. These cars are so fast. You want to have that tool in your belt, and it's not here. This rain is playing tricks. Revs just lost that rear end and also a spot. But he held on. He held on. Yeah, he wanted another tool in his uh, toolbox there, and that would be traction control, because that car looks loose on the rear and wide again there, coming through Brooklands. So struggling to keep control of that car, F4H revs, now that the weather is becoming an element. Dino fighting with revs. Dino's course in that Nissan 787B for revs. 
And you can see the speed of the 787. The Nissan's nice to the to the corners, but when that 787 gets a chance to open it up, that's what it, with its light weight can really pull away. Yeah, it sounds like a vacuum cleaner <laughs> when it gets wound up, right? That rotary engine just whipping up some speed. Awesome stuff down the back straight. And I think Revs will have a little opportunity now just to pull away very slightly once we exit Beckett's. Maybe not, though. Look at the speed. Dino was able to run their revs wide again. Going on to the hangar straight. And, and that's why I like seeing the different vehicles out there, because you do. You, you, you can see the Nissan get a chance to catch up to the 787B. Those four rotors, that's what you're hearing out of that Mazda. And as we work the more technical sides of the track, that's where the Nissan really performs well. Yeah, and you can see it there, how much more controllable the Nissan is. That's relative. Even Dino having a little bit of a moment there coming through club. The revs just, I mean, it almost looks itchy, the rear of that Mazda, the way every time he applies the power, it skids around. Well, Andy, it looks like the rain has stopped. The sun is coming back out. So three laps left. Track still very wet. Still very wet. I think the guys in the Nissan, though, are going to like this the most. That's the most high-powered car. That's the X-Class car in this field. So I think they're the ones who are going to really like this the most. Yes. Look at that beautiful sunshine. Yeah, 671 horsepower in that Nissan. That's what I, you know, and that's where I feel like that's why they decided to put Lightning for TX3 in that Nissan. They had decided that before the track conditions were wet, but you knew once the rain started coming down, that Nissan was really going to perform well. Knowing it's going to be wet, yeah, I mean, I would have put Lightning in the Nissan. To be honest, I was surprised to see it before the race, because I've always thought of Lightning as a little bit of a power car driver, somebody who prefers to uh, have a car that's a little bit loose and uh, might lose time around the corners. But yes, yeah, stepping up, getting in the grip car here, and it's paying dividends because he lucked out because it's wet. Is when that all? You, when you look at this, you know, 1988 Jaguar, XJR9, disappointing, can you say? Or is that Mitch <laughs> that's just being a bit disappointing? I don't know if it's disappointing. These guys are running like second and third. They're podium positions. Am I, am I right in thinking that? I think there's only Rossi ahead of them. Uh, so right now the order is Rossi, followed by Lightning in second. Third is Mitch. Yeah, I'd want to see Mitch fighting Lightning. I'd want to see him putting the pressure on. He's been managing to pressure Lage in the EMEA finals this season. Why can't he pressure Lightning? Top guy in an NA. Yeah, Rossi, remember folks, started this race in third. So now he's moved up two spots. Now in first, the TX3 guys have fallen down. Lightning was your pole sitter to start this race, now in second. As you're looking back here at Lightning. Of course, TX3 boys are in studio with us here in Seattle. As we're getting close to these final laps. Boy, Mitch just right behind him. That's Venom behind him. Trying to hold him off through these final two laps. Boy, Rossi's really nowhere to be found. He's a, only about three tenths of a second up over Lightning right now. But I think Lightning's more fo focused about a defensive line here as we come around these final laps. Yeah, a lot of pressure on those young shoulders right now. And uh, you can see it just over the room there, Lightning really having to zone in, ensure that there are no more mistakes, no more little slip ups because Mitch will be in there. He wants to find his way up this. He wants to make it a one-two for JSR to start this off. Uh, but so far, yeah, Rossi's checked out. He's, uh, he's gonna take the win and leave, leave Mitch to get what he can get. You can see Venom in the Jag running along right now. You see Chemicals in fifth, Commando in sixth. Commando got caught up. About three or four laps into this race is Zermatt, who's running at 12th, came up on his back right fender and forced him into a spin. Difficult accident that looked like it was caused by the two TPR boys, Chemical and Zermatt, trying to get past Commando without maybe uh, without maybe any manners. Both of them bullying him into a sideways to the slide and getting caught up in the car. So tough move, one of those ones compounded maybe by two drivers who are getting a bit greedy. And when you think about Senna, he was started on the grid in fourth, Andy, and he's fallen really all the way back to 11th, that's that's tough. I don't know if he got caught up in that six or seven car slowdown, but it seemed to think logistically he had to be in there. I mean, Senna's also had a long trip, folks. I mean, he came from France. I think he landed probably sometime in the mid hours of the morning. So uh, 
I'm still happy he's here. He, I'm sure he's happy with his performance. But Senna, certainly, I think he thinks he's faster. Yeah, Hard BR said he actually woke him up in the hotel at like 3.30 in the morning <laughs> saying that he was in the wrong room. <laughs> he was in the right room, but nevertheless, he woke him up too. So I think a lot of these TX3 guys, as Lightning continues to run along in second, as we're heading around the final lap here, with that Nissan, once I saw the, the vote for the community to go wet, you knew the Nissan was gonna perform well. You always trust a grip car in the wet, can't you? It's what you wanna do, sitting there in public hoppers on Forza, and uh, you know, a wet track pops up, you're always gonna jump into your grip car, into something that's gonna give you extra downforce, a little bit more speed through the corners and a little bit less in the straight. How much have some of those drivers been struggling with the Mazda? Uh, and incredible to see uh, how well Rossi's done here. Yeah, two Nissans running up front and Rossi and Lightning. But right now, it's all about JSR Rossi, who's well out in front as we're coming back to the finish line. It looks like JSR Rossi, he's going to finish first. And rightfully so, really just... Just a Sunday drive in the rain around Silverstone. No big deal out there hot lapping. What is it about Rossi that he doesn't win an individual competition? <laughs> so the second we put a team competition up, he's at the top of the podium again. Absolutely brilliant. Massive congratulations to him. Very popular guy. And I'm glad to see him out there winning races. Well, some of the questions here is, uh, you know, as unofficially he is going to be finishing first is if Commando doesn't get spun around, is, does that cost JSR some points that they really could have stockpiled there in race one? Oh, yeah, they would love to have his points there. But, I mean, Rossi finishing first, Mitch finishing also on a podium. JSR looked pretty good in that first race. Coming into race number two, that means that with first and third there, the grid position into race number two will be first and third JSR. Those two won't be able to team up a little bit, a little bit of team riding, because it was definitely Mitch and Rossi bullying TX3 Lightning at the start there that gave Rossi the lead. Hopefully today with us just pretty much having team exhibition races, the adjudication process is going to go a little bit faster today. Maybe not so much of a heavy hand with not anything at stake here, but you th you think Zermak alone, we saw it. I mean, with, with our eyes, Brian came out and gave us multiple replays that he is no doubt, Ali, going to be penalized. Did you see anything else out there? Anything else other than that moment with Zermatt, Chemical, and Commando? I don't think so. Maybe a moment there with Revs, a little bit reckless, making a lot of mistakes. What do you think? Uh, racing incident. Yeah. Racing incident. Something we didn't mention also is during that incident with Zermatt, Davy's skills actually made up three spots. So I don't know if that snuck by, but he, he made up three <laughs> spots. So the TPR did score some points there. Of course he did. Such an old fox, you know? <laughs> <laughs> He's always in the right place to capitalize on someone else's mistakes. Absolutely brilliant. Unfortunate for those guys like BR that were in the Mazda 787B because you didn't get to see him really stretch his legs and show what he can do, what he's been doing all of Series 1. Let's take a look at the provisional results here of race number one of our team racing today out of Seattle. Rossi was out there on the podium. He had Lightning Mitch, Venom, Hard BR, actually not bad to finish fifth based on the conditions and getting stuck with that Mazda 787B in the rain. Venom. Venom in fourth there. He is the reigning winner of the team competition from the preseason invitational. He's the only member of that team still in F4H. He's lost his two teammates. So he's still out there getting good results, but F4H might need to work a little bit harder in Dino and Revs to support Venom. Anything else surprising that you see out of the, uh, the, the grid there, Andy? Uh, I mean, Senna, I mean, yeah. he's here, and he came a long way, and he didn't want to finish down there. Uh, so I fully expect him to have a better race uh, in race number two. Well, we're in the adjudication process here, folks. When we come back from this break, we'll have the official results, and we'll be moving on to race number two. Don't go anywhere.
Well, back here in Seattle, just around the corner from the Space Needle, as we've made it through Series 1, and we're having some fun this weekend as those get ready to travel to come here for the playoffs just 10 days from now. Of course, they'll be here for about a week from now, uh, sending on to Seattle. And before we talk uh, more about that race, let's talk about the playoffs coming up next week. I mean, this has been probably the most grueling and demanding series that we've had for these drivers to be put through to come out week after week and demand a high finish to be in that top 50. The Forza Racing Championship 2018 has been the hardest, the, the biggest, the most demanding competition we've ever seen in Forza Motorsport. Uh, the drivers, you know, some of them shining, some of them having a harder time out there, but the ones who have really done great, yeah, they're going to be coming out to Seattle, they're going to be racing for just a massive pot of money. So, uh, yeah, I mean, good stuff to do with a game that we all love. Well, let's go back over to Brian Eckberg, who's got a recap of what we saw in race number one. We got a little bit of everything there. We got a wet race. We got team racing. We've got car choices and strategy all playing a part in how this race shook down. If we take a look at the replay, you can see some of the chaos that was happening in that race. What I found really interesting is the car choices that each of the teams were making. If we think of the Jaguars, maybe the all-around best car, the 787 is the, the grip car, and the Nissan uh, as the as the pure speed car, that is. Uh, it was interesting to see how each of the teams were handling that. You see the the incident here between Chemical Commando and Zermatt here. Uh, really, Chemical getting the best of that there, but causing chaos all throughout the back of the pack there. Really interesting to see how these guys chose cars. FRH Venom put the fastest guy in the fastest car. They're looking to make a statement early, but in the end, when we get to the finish line, it's Nissan, Nissan, Jag, Jag, 787B. So. Uh, it's always going to be a matter of, of strategy here, but so it's interesting. And with the next two races, to see how these guys handle their car choices. And when you mention the car choices, it's the Nissan, right? The the one that had the highest grip with the wet conditions in Silverstone that ended up shining. Now maybe not not shining. Maybe not the car that would be the most to overtake, but it was certain the one that would would be able to to hold their position, hold themselves on the podium. Yeah, and, and you think about. Uh, a guy like Senna right behind us, maybe not a, as much experience as his teammates right now. They're putting him in a car that he feels very comfortable in and uh, trying to ease him into this Forza RC competition here in our recap show. Uh, let's start him off with success, put him in a car he's comfortable in. In a way, we've started them all on quite a hard set of cars. <laughs> the, the Group C cars are very fast. Uh, you know, baptism of fire for all of them. And yeah, I mean, you can give Senna, you can help him out as much as possible. But moving forward, we're going to see like some really different cars coming out now. Yeah, I think this is always going, and, and from what I understand, these guys do not know the final car and track combination, so that'll, that's always a wild card as well. We'll see, then maybe we'll see them sort of huddling together as they make their choices. It's gonna be interesting. Let's take a look at the final results of race number one. Always good stuff, Brian, and these teams, I, I, don't, I don't know, when they saw the rain, did they make any change? I don't think so. I think they were locked into the cars that they knew they were gonna prep for. So we do see that penalty from Zermatt. That's going to drop him to 11th, but the top three remains the same. Rossi, Lightning, Mitch. So a nice job, one and three by JSR. Isn't it just a staple of motorsport? We say this over and again. You know, you can give the person who made the mistake a penalty, but you can't give the places back to the person who lost out. Commando in last position there, and I think he'll be feeling like he didn't deserve that at all. Yeah, I feel bad for Commando there, but, you know, I feel even worse for his controller, knowing what he's done to those things <laughs> in the past. It's a Hulk smash. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see Hard BR there in fifth place, one of the fastest guys we have in the entire community, and he's right now sitting by with Bravo. Okay. And Chad, it'll be easy. Hey, thanks, guys. I'm down here with TX3. Uh, so special to have these guys in the studio with us. Not only is it the first time we've had a team on a Wednesday show here, but also TX3 being uh, the most dominant team in the world right now with Senna, Lightning, Hard BR. Uh, first of all, thanks so much for making it out here. I think you said it was, what, 20 hours of travel for you to yeah. get here? Yeah, exactly. 20 hours of flight, and I uh, had some problems with changing between the flights, uh -huh. but it was okay. I made there in the end. Uh, that's what counts. Right. And probably okay that it's a little bit of team exhibition racing today, right? Warm up instead of having to get shut off a plane into the Series 1 playoffs, it'll be, it'll be a bit trickier. Yeah, yeah, probably it's a little bit tricky. Uh, sometimes you get tired and uh, yeah. you just can't get the practice on because your mind doesn't get it. Sure. So uh, it's kind of different, but it's like it's uh, I always like this 
this kind of teen exhibition thing. I yeah. think it's a different world to Foza, and uh, it really puts more uh, on the line, you know? Sure. Uh, speaking of practice, uh, you're the world ranked number one on the global leaderboard. Coming into Series 1, did you expect to be here? Uh, no, for sure not. Uh, I expect the guys to be uh, much more better than me, but the thing is I got uh, good positions on the leaderboards, mm -hmm. uh, so I made what was up to me. Uh, did my races in a little bit of easiest uh, region, but uh, honestly I didn't expect that, but I know right. I have some good guys behind me. Uh, coming in with the number one spot, does that change how you approach the race, or are you just going to try to treat it as a normal race? Well, uh, the practice has to go the same way. Uh, uh, at the end, uh, you, n you still need to, to win the race. Uh, you need to do that. But uh, I know I've got some, some good guys behind me. Uh, change because uh, I'll be a little bit more confident. Because sure. I know it's good to feel like a top one in the world. But uh, it's so much things to do, and I need to put everything on the place. Right. Is there anyone specifically in the lineup on the global leaderboard that will be here in Seattle in just a week and a half that, that you're worried about? Yeah, for sure. Lej is the reigning champion. Like uh, we got a road runner as well. It's very good, but Lej is standing exactly behind me, mm -hmm. so I need to keep an eye on that. But I'm not letting the things easier for him. So right. that's it. All right, last question. We got a really fun race coming up here with some 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 different cars. Anything you're expecting coming in? Oh yeah, the second race is, is a little bit different that we expect. Like we never seen a tra uh, truck racing before, so that should be exciting, and you can expect some uh, different battles because it's uh, it's great to have different things. And like I will be in the DBR1, the Aston Martin, and uh, it's got a sketchy car. You get uh, soft suspension, so uh, it's different, but should be fun. I think so. End. Excellent. We're looking forward to seeing it, guys. On the desk, back over to you. Well, there's hard BR, and, you know, it's a real shame. And I know, you know, going forward, we're going to do a better job at capturing Latin America now that some you have some not only hard BR, but guys really emerging down there. Wesley's one of the other guys. What have you seen in just having the opportunity to spectate what's going on in Latin America, Ali? I mean, we take skill readings from all these different regions, and we look at uh, how competitive the drivers are, how much they're up there. Latin America is now almost as competitive as North America. It's absolutely incredible how much that region has come along, how much it's expanded, both in the amount of people who play and the quality they play. And, and you know, the racing, it's unbelievable. There's some, Andy, when you finally see someone from your region on top, that just grows not only your region, but that grows the game as well. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure that some of these guys, they know who Wesley is. They know who Hard BR is, and they're like, he's my neighbor. <laughs> you know, and, and I bet they want to climb up those leaderboards just as well. So that's probably only you know, created more audience, but also more drivers. There's so much pride, not only in your region, but in your country. You know, when we were out in Le Mans last year and that pained Lage to be in his home country, one of the best drivers we have in all of Forza and come up short in France. I mean, there's a lot more that, at stake than just the money. There is. And we're going to Mexico City, Scott. We're heading there to Latin America, right to where all of this incredible racing is happening. And every single one of those drivers is going to want to be there. And they're going to want to take the win, the big win in Latin America. Well, let's go back over to Bravo for more. This time, race number two. Thanks, guys. Getting ready for race number two. Remember that first poll that we had you vote on? It was between the 1992 Ford Escort RS Cosworth or the Dodge Challenger SRT 8392. And by a larger margin, the SRT 392 excuse me, is going to take that. So we're going to have a little bit of a different car there. It's going to be a big difference in terms of size, strength, and handling compared to the Escort. Of course, that Hemi uh, real-wheel drive there as well. Now let's talk about the three cars we're going to have here in total. First up, look at this thing. It's the Mercedes-Benz number 24 Tank Pool 24 racing truck. This thing is a beast. Over 1,000 horses inside, but it's going to need it as it weighs over 6 tons, a 12.8 liter turbocharged inline 6, and it is the heaviest vehicle in the entire series. Also, the DBR1 was in there as well. But let's go ahead now and take a look at the Circuit of the Americas. We're heading to Austin, Texas, 3.4 miles or 5.5 kilometers, 20 turns in total, and as you know, Technically, one of the most difficult in the game. Also, plenty of interesting elevation changes here as well. Guys, we're ready for race number two. I'm excited to see what it holds. If somehow we have these trucks going side by side, overtaking, it's not happening because that is a full width around this track. 
I'm, I'm so pumped. We're going trucking. <laughs> We're finally going trucking <laughs> at the Forza Racing Championship. <laughs> yes! Uh, these cars are awesome. They're big and they're heavy and they like to barge each other. And as you say, put two side by side and there isn't much track left for somebody else. Uh, there's also some smaller Aston Martins here in this <laughs> racetrack as well. <laughs> <laughs> so they got to find their way around. <laughs> this is going to be fun. How do you guys feel about the vote? We went with the Challenger over the Ford. I'm always glad to see Fords get knocked out. <laughs> it's an American car, so an American one, American versus American. But, yep. I mean, we're at a circuit of the Americas. We have a Mercedes German truck. We have a Aston Martin. But we didn't get a rental car in a Dodge Challenger. <laughs> we got a Dodge Challenger SRT8. Yeah, it's a good car. It's, it's fruity. You know, I, I, don't, I, I don't love it in this selection sure. just because I love the truck so much. It kind of eclipses all else for me. I can barely see the other cars uh, out there. It's going to be truck racing. Uh, for me. So what strategy comes into play now that we're talking about who for these teams, first of all, do you put in the truck? And then what strategy are you running? Are you, are you, I mean, you have to be a, a somewhat defensive line with this thing. You know, I, I'm curious about that. I wonder if the truck might be one of the faster cars here. Like oh, there's no doubt it's faster. It's just, can it, can it hang? <laughs> can, can, can you handle as well as, yeah. I mean, there's a few straights obviously on the circuit. There are there are straights and you can you can get it around a corner kind of well for a car that weighs twelve thousand like, pounds. Tw yeah, <laughs> twelve thousand pounds. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, I mean, what do you reckon? What do you recommend oh, for man. for strategy here? Strategy. That's a tough one. I mean, I guess you got to go with the guy who's comfortable in a Dodge Challenger, who's comfortable in a bigger car, uh, and then the Aston Martin. That's probably the most tricky car of the choices. No I doubt. would say. Uh, and then the the truck. I mean. You get in it and you drive it. I mean, if I'm the, if I'm the guy in the truck, I'm just having fun, right? <laughs> I'm just having fun. I'm going to race the other trucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, if you get the chance to just lean on the Aston a little bit, just, <laughs> <laughs> just to rub wheels, I mean, that truck isn't moving, and the Aston Martin might find itself, yeah, bouncing off into the wilderness. And so that's going to be the interesting thing is when, you know, the folks that are in the Aston Martin or in the Challenger, if they all of a sudden say, well, I have some overtaking opportunities on this big Mercedes-Benz truck, that needs to be a white gloves moment when you go around because even just a little bit of wheel rub, you find yourself way off in the gravel. I mean, let's say, let's say the truck's going around the outside of a turn. If you've got a light little car like that, you can almost just hook into the inside of the truck, cheeky, cheeky as you like, lean on it all the way around the corner. The truck will hardly notice. It's like a mouse leaning on an elephant, you know? But you can get a little bit faster through that. If you are found yourself on the outside of the truck, that's a whole nother matter. If it <laughs> leans on you, yeah, like you say, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the global leaderboard. We have a lot of folks that are here in our team competition that are on that. Of course, Hard BR. We talked about how well uh, Wesley was doing down in Latin America. Venom is with us. Mitch is with us. Of course, Lightning is with us today. Rossi Commando. Just to name a few that are hanging out with us. Of course, we'll, I think we're going to see um, s some more folks start to find them some opportunities in this teams as we really reload with a whole new group of teams tonight. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's so many more opportunities now for drivers to, to join teams and, and come and get involved with the racing here. I mean, Forza RC, of course, the main event, the main course this year is an individual competition, but we've been doing some fun team stuff along with it. Um, and so, yeah, th there's good opportunities there for them to, to join in with, uh, with that racing. If you're just joining us, we are waiting for some folks to join up in the lobby. You know, doing, we're doing a little bit of this right now. But let's, uh, if, if you haven't seen what teams that we have here hanging out with us on a Wednesday, here are the teams that are joining us here in this afternoon session. Of course, in studio, Lightning Hard BR sent out with us. JSR Rossi just coming up with a, a podium as long as uh, as well as Mitch Commando was caught up in the spin cycle and that last time <laughs> through uh, Silverstone Chemical Zermatt they're just out there ruining people's lives Davy Skills you mentioned Andy just uh, having a nice run there moving up three spots and then Venom Revs and Dino from F4H really some of the top teams hanging out with us here in this afternoon session. Yeah, so we'll start with JSR. I mean, JSR is a very close-knit team, but they have had drivers in every single RC. So they may be a new team, but they are by no means rookies. And then continuing on, TPR? 
TPR, yeah. I mean, I, I would think of it more as like a, a waiting room than a team. <laughs> There's a lot of buddies there who are <laughs> kind of hanging out, waiting to get picked up by other other orgs and teams. That's uh, just not right. That's just not right. <laughs> well, to be honest, to be honest, sure. you know, look at the way they're racing today. Um, yeah. You know, they, they, need to, they need to pull their trousers up a little bit uh, for today's racing, although it's a bit of fun, isn't it? We're having a bit of fun today, having some team racing. So I guess maybe they're letting their head down too. Yeah, and, and I still go back to the earlier question. Is it an advantage or a disadvantage to be here in the studio, especially when you factor in the travel that these guys have go had to go through over the last 24-plus hours? I mean, let's be real. It's, it's always going to be a disadvantage. It's always going to be a disadvantage, them sitting there. They're not at home. They're not in their butt grooves on their sofa <laughs> snuggled in, are they? They're out in a foreign environment. They've got a new box. They've got their home controllers, I guess. Uh, Lightning's got an awesome controller. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to see that in a bit. <laughs> But it's, it's always going to be a disadvantage. You do your best. Let's take a look at the grid for race number two. We're finally ready to go. Rossi's going to be up on top. Lightning's going to be in that second place. Mitch is in third. Now, Venom now in fourth place. He's going to have to be very careful because he has one of the fastest drivers in the world that's going to be hot on his tail. That's hard BR down there in fifth. And really for the rest of the pack, it's hard to look at the grid here and really dissect it because – we don't know which vehicles they're picking in this team competition until we get out there. Because you're like, yeah, yeah, Hard BR probably did a great job. And next thing you know, he's a huge truck. You know, I don't know what to do with that. I tell you, we're going to see Rossi and Lightning. Oh, no, I'm looking at the start. It's there. Right, that's Rossi. Andy, yeah. take it away. You're going to be here. We go. We're headed uphill for the first time around Circuit of the Americas. And look, it's Lightning in the Dodge Challenger SRT8 coming around now downhill. And there's a truck right behind him. Yeah, that's right, looking for a way past JSR Mitch already into second, and that big old truck's going to struggle to find a way through uh, easily. Cue the Vinnie Hill music now, folks. This is going to be wild. Does Lightning get away here, though? I mean, he's in his car choice, now coming through that complex. But look at this. This truck is just as quick. It's keeping up with Lightning. And then look, now we got an Aston Martin there as well, JSR Rossi. Absolutely astonishing how these three cars are all matched on pace heading through this first sector. Ooh, baby. I didn't see this coming. I mean, look, these guys are pretty close. I wonder if you put these guys in ghosted races. What would the lap times look like, at least early on? <laughs> but this is pretty close racing. Where I'm are the rest of the trucks, though? Not sure who got caught up in that carnage. I think one of the Mercedes-Benz trucks was part of that, guys. So now you're going to have two different packs the rest of the way. Still unchanged, though, up at the front. It's Rossi Lightning to Mitch. These three all very close to each other. Lightning's fan club, you know who you are out there in the chat, checking in. Uh, Lightning checking out at the front, great to see. Heard even Mama Lightning's out there in the chat. Rossi, though, might be measuring up Mitch in that truck. So Rossi, coming in, he's coming around. Easy pass on this back straight there. But that Mitch straight on him like he's not his teammate. And I tell you, when you see a truck coming up your inside like that, you get out the way. You know. We've all been out there on the highway, right? And the, you got the truck in the fast lane. It's like, get out of the way, man. I'm in my Aston Martin. I'm ready to move. <laughs> side by side. I mean, these guys actually swapping positions, but Lightning not getting away here. We really thought he would be getting away. Typically, when you see swapping positions, the lead driver is going to escape. Not happening. The SRT Challenger not looking too strong around, around Cody. You're absolutely right. And it's taking a lot from Lightning, I think, trying to hold that lead, trying to get away. I wonder if we'll see Mitch back up there a little later in this race. And of course, this is only the first lap. The, 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 the tires are going to come to temp. The cars are going to start to warm up. He's going to feel more comfortable even in lap two, lap three, lap four. But look at this. This truck's pulling away. This truck's pulling away from that Aston Martin. Go on, Mitch. Look at that. Looking down in second place, towering down, throwing the crisp packets out from the uh, glove compartment drawer and just losing some weight there as well. This guy, I think, is on for a race win unless Lightning can hold him off. Now, here we come uphill now. This is the heavy braking zone. You're going on get nice and tucked in there. Lightning does a good job. Mitch comes a little further out. But boy, I mean, can you draft on the truck? If, if you're Mitch, do you want to get nice and behind? Can, can you take advantage of that? I mean, you'd think, right? You'd think there'd be a massive vacuum created by that enormous truck. So a nice, uh, a nice little speed boost for you there if you're heading down the straight. My question is, who is that is way back there just coming right now through lap number two it's commando, commando. just hanging out in the pits no big deal baloney sandwich time <laughs> commando come on man <laughs> i mean th this is now two controllers he's destroyed in two consecutive <laughs> races but here we are still up at the front this is jsr rossi and mitch 
Well, no, this is, yeah, Rossi to Mitch now. Uh, and where's the Lightning? So this is Lightning. Yeah, Lightning, yeah, lightning out on front. To Mitch. Exactly. We're looking back from Lightning, back towards Mitch in second place. Rossi in that Aston Martin still on the podium here and trying to get his pace down. But it's just looking like he's struggling a little bit now that, as you say, Flip, the tires are getting up to temperature. Everything's starting to tick around with these cars. And the Aston looking a, look, a little bit more of a difficult car to get speed out of than the other two. Right now, we ride, about, ride aboard TX3 Hard BR. He's sizing up Senna now. Gives him a touch, lets him know he's there. But boy, I mean, if you don't want to waste an opportunity, certainly on a track like this. If you waste it, that's fine. If there's going to be another one, that's Coda. There's so many places to make an overtaking. There's switchbacks. Uh, so if I'm hard BR, patience, patience. Next well, that's turn. Two, you know, that's two teammates right there. There's no reason to give them any love taps. You just say, hey, put the blinker on. Let me buy. Two right, Coda. A track where everyone's racing each other, but they're also racing the track limits. You see Senna go all four wheels off the track. They're not uncommon around here. Uh, if you do that too often, though, the race marshals will give you a slap on the wrist in the form of a time penalty. I don't know if you guys are listening to the sounds, but Hard BR really taking this thing all the way up to the top of the limits. So here we are, lap two now. And uh, just in front of us, this is TX3. Hard BR currently in seventh place, just in front of him in the truck is TX3 Venom, uh, Senna, and then in front of that truck is F4H Venom in between two trucks. So, a lot of traffic in front of him in two trucks. I love the way the trucks punctuate the race order. <laughs> they really do. <laughs> Let's go our man down on the track, Brian Eckbert. What do you see in this first three laps? We've got a couple of incidents with Hard BR here. We're looking here uh, where Dino and I believe it was Hard BR made some contact here. You'll see it as we go into this corner. There he is going right into uh, making contact with one another right there. And then just a few, a bit later on the same lap, I believe it was, here's Commando diving on the inside and Hard BR turning right into him. And that's why Commando's in the pits right now because it looks like there's contact between Commando and Hard BR. Well, we're still unchanged at the lead. Lightning to Mitch, then to Rossi. Venom, I believe now is in fifth. And uh, we just saw it. That was, well, Chemical. And that might have been uh, Senna there in the truck now in sixth. Good job from Chemical there up in fourth position. Uh, TPR having a rough old time in race number one. So looking to get some valuable points to get Total Performance Racing onto that leaderboard. Hard BR now on the brakes. And he's going to get around Venom now to make up a spot in the Aston Martin. Now, this is what we like to see. Aston Martin, you want to race a car that you know and that you can compete with and side by side. This is almost like the spec racing and the entry in the middle of a spec racing in almost three different class type cars. RBR feels good about that move, I bet. Yeah, made it look easy down the straight, didn't he? Beautiful stuff. And both of them tucked into the draft now at the end of the straight, and they're going to make it or try for a double overtake. Three wide now as we approach this hairpin turn. RBR, he's still out in front, but look at this. Senna does not want to give up that spot. Talk about being in a truck around these two small cars. He's got his teammate there as well. We almost see Hard VR lose the rear end. And that just you can see how I'm struggling with that rear end grip. Venom is such a smart driver. It's all ones and zeros for him right now. He's looking at this screen. He just sees the Matrix waiting, waiting for an opportunity to dive up and take two positions. It's not going to happen that corner, but I'm calling it now. Venom is going to get past both these guys. It's not going to take much. It's not going to take much, whether that be Senna making a slight mistake and it's a big truck to get around, or Hard VR gets involved in that mistake. So if I'm one of these drivers, I like Venom's spot right now. Just an update on Commando. He's only 7,500 feet behind the leader. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. Not Commando quite. watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but up front, I mean, Lightning, Mitch, and then Ve uh, Rossi. Yep, Things British. working very yep. nicely for JSR yeah. right now. You have British Racing Green, then you also have Camo. <laughs> and I, I'm not sure Camo was offered in 1958. <laughs> was it, yeah, is, it, is that standard? Is that standard, <laughs> Rossi? At least he's not wearing the wood livery like we saw previously. <laughs> so Rossi's dropped the spot now. That's his chemical in the truck who's gotten around the Aston Martin. So we got two trucks in the top three. That's great. Chemical then, using the truck, maybe using a little bit of its weight to be able to uh, make moves there, push through. It is a free pass, isn't it, the truck? If you're going to send it uh, on another car, they do kind of have to get out the way. It's hard to block when uh, you weigh 1,200 pounds. 
all three it's trucks. Thousand. Yeah, all three trucks actually in top five positions now. So this truck actually seems to be, the Mercedes truck seems to be a pretty quick car in combination with Dakota. It might be the most stable through the through the curves we have right now in the corners. It obviously doesn't have a lot of swaying as it moves through. And you're right, if, you, if you're going to make an overtaking attempt on one of these Mercedes-Benz trucks, you better watch out, especially if you're in, in that Aston Martin. You can easily be pushed off on the side. It's going to happen right here. Coming out of turn number 11 is crucial. You need a good exit there. Find draft if you can get it, and then bang, best overtake, turn number 12. That's what you're going to make it, and that's where we're approaching right now. Too far away, but here comes Rossi. Rossi up on the outside of the uh, chemical. The chemical is going to squeeze him out, which is what he should do in that truck. Use the size to its advantage. Rossi hanging it out there through the outside of the hairpin. How did he manage that? How did he find the speed? And Rossi, though, still there. I mean, Chemical's not going to make it easy for him. But now we got the complex of that tricky left-hander. That's number turn 14, 15, 16 now. But Rossi's going to get the better exit. What's this mean here? It's a short straight, though. Now you're going to turn 17, 18. This is very deceptive here. This is a turn that kind of tightens, and then it's going to straighten back out. Lap four, when we go one more lap to go, we're coming into the last sector here. This is Rossi. We ride aboard, looking ahead to Chemical. He wants that last podium spot, doesn't he? Well, we talked about the, you know, the overtaking of these trucks, not only the width of the truck, but let's also think about the length. It's really almost like passing one and a half cars. That's just something you're not used to in your everyday goings when you're out there on, you know, Forza Motorsport 7. It's a different animal for sure, but Rossi's got to be able to handle it. Here's another good place for him to actually assess his car versus the truck in front of him, heading uphill for the final time, lap number five. Rossi, we ride aboard in fourth, looking ahead to Chemical for that last podium spot. Chemical doing everything he can, and this is his good, be his best performance of the day. Didn't have a great time out in race number one, but Chemical wants to hold it on. TPR needs a good finish here. They certainly do. Chemical doing a great job leading them towards that. We're seeing Zerm out on the ticket there, dropping down to 11th. we having a little bit of a scrap with Dino for it at very least. But look so who's TPR, not a, not a walk in the park. No, yeah. not in a walk in the park, but look who's coming. This is TX3 Senna now. He's now wants to be part of this mix as well. We got two Aston Martins as well as there as well. But Rossi, now, now we're approaching the section where if I'm Rossi, let's make this move. We're coming up towards turn 11. That's, to me, that's the most important turn on this track. Heavy braking now. Chemical, make, uh, make that truck nice and wide. Rossi's going to get a better exit here. Look at the smoke on that exit. Is it going to happen here? This is going to be it. Get inside that draft up on Rossi. Wait until the last possible moment, and then heavy brake. Absolutely right. It's going to be the end of this straight that we're going to be watching out for Rossi. That massive speed difference that the Aston Martin gives him bang straight through on Chemical. Can he block the line as he comes in now towards the apex, or is Chemical going to be straight back on him? He's, you can just see that rear end of the Aston Martin struggle under brakes, but it looks like Rossi's done it. He set it up perfectly. Like I said, the spot, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it there. Bang, Chemical still there. Now Senna's close as well. Yeah, Chemical trying to muscle his way past. There is not one way to overtake subtly in that tank pool racing truck and Rossi just fighting like crazy to keep him behind him. Lightning still your leader up at front in the Dodge Challenger SRT8. So he's likely to be your race winner here. But this is where the action is. Rossi, Chemical, and Senna now in fifth. All fighting for third position. This is the last position on this podium. What a result it would be for any one of these drivers. Yeah, JSR now, they were on podiums last race. Now it's another, another opportunity for them to get another podium. So Rossi wants this, but this is going to be TX3 Lightning in the Dodge Challenger taking the race win here at race number two. Behind him, it's JSR Mitch. So JSR, great job here. It looks like it's going to be Rossi at the line. Who is it? It's Rossi takes the position. So two positions there for the Jap Speed Racing Team. Incredible run to the line there from Rossi and manages just about to pick Chemical so close for the two of them. What a combination. You know, I didn't see the oddball race. <laughs> that was actually fantastic. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Well, a tip of the cap to Race Boy and his team out there for putting these, uh, really, no other way to put it, these oddballs together. <laughs> and really the truck performing a lot better than we thought it would. Yeah, you thought.
I loved it. <laughs> I was all about the truck. I'm, I'm owning that. <laughs> that was mine. <laughs> no, awesome to see. I loved it. Yeah, loved, well, loved watching the race around. Such big things, such incredible racing machines. And of course, they do have a, uh, a real life precedent. These guys uh, go off and they race in their big trucks uh, out and tracks all over the world. Uh, yeah, inc an incredible genre of motorsport. It's, n it's, it's a one opportunity here. I mean, this is the fun week and we, we get a chance to see a fun car. But I'll be honest, I mean, that was racing. Yep. We were here to have fun. No one wants to be the last guy to cross the finish line, <coughs> right? <coughs> These Commando. guys are all Sorry. still super serious about it, weren't they? Still super... <laughs> Commando. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just throwing everything they had at it. And I love that. You know, cool to watch. Commando with some angry racing. Sometimes angry racing is good, you know, because you need to take some chances. Okay. We've seen, you know, Rossi at times be too polite out there on the track. But really after Commando got caught up in the first race, then got caught up early in the second race and then decided, okay, I'm going out there, I'm going to just dive bomb somebody. And if it sticks, it sticks. If it doesn't, then I'm headed to the pits. Yeah, I mean, you know, he, he's uh, just so unlucky. Come on, Barry. <laughs> he's so unlucky. Uh, if he's not taking punches, he's throwing them, you know, and it's spoiling his race. You know, of course, this isn't, this isn't boxing. You know, this is motorsport, and you've got to have a little bit of a moment where you're not in contact with somebody else. Otherwise, you're going to be in last position every time. I mean, it was turn one. I mean, it's uphill. It's a difficult place to make a move. Uh, I mean, typically, if I'm going to make that move, I'm going to set it up. It's going to come. You're going to see it happening. Uh, it, it was early on in the race. Uh, he probably didn't have enough time in the car or really practice, or practice that track. I hear you. I hear you. Let's take a look at those provisional results for race number two. We saw Lightning cross the line first. And, of course, there are the JSR boys. They're at second and third, and Mitch and Rossi. And, really, if you were out there and you were in the – Dodge Challenger, <laughs> you're near the bottom, and maybe that was the car that was lacking. You had some nice top-end speed uh, with, the, with the lightweight Aston Martin, and you had the raw power from the truck. And the Challenger, except for Lightning, who was out in front early, Andy, he... Uh, really that Dodge Challenger was lacking at the back of the race. Yeah, it sure was. I mean, I mean, Lightning got to race the track. He didn't have to race the trucks. I mean, everyone else had to race trucks. <laughs> Lightning didn't have to do that. So if Lightning had to race <laughs> trucks, perhaps we would have seen him for place further down the order uh, along where the rest of the, uh, the, the Dodges were. Um, but the action was right in the middle of the pack. That was with the trucks and the Astons. What a great pairing. And we saw Rossi drop back early, and that just kind of opened the door for Lightning just to say, all right, well, I've, I've gone to the rental counter. I, I have my Challenger. I'm headed out, and I'm just I'm going to drive around Austin, Texas for about 10 minutes, and then I'm going to collect my podium. And that's, that's surely what he did. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful stuff. I mean, for all the drivers out there saying, you know, the Challenger doesn't work, like they made it work. Uh, love to see it. Story right now, JSR, back-to-back -back consistent finishes, getting on the podium to other drivers on the podium in back-to-back -back races. Yeah, looking good. I mean, you want to be racing your best as you head towards the most important racing of the season. And JSR is doing that. Even if this is just a fun race, I like what JSR is doing. They're a well-experienced team. They've been to LAN events before. They've been to Seattle before. They've been to Le Mans before. So if I'm JSR, I'm comfortable. I feel pretty good about what I'm doing right now, even if it's just for fun. You know what I don't see from JSR, though? And, yeah, I mean, to focus on that sort of serious element of team racing that we're looking at today, what I don't see from JSR is that thing I saw from F4H uh, back in the preseason invitation, which is that real team driving, that making a gap for your teammate, working the other cars around them to get through and optimize for your team. JSR are doing great as a bunch of single drivers on the track at the same time, but they're not necessarily working together to add to what they could be getting. It's a little difficult, right? I mean, these guys are playing poker. They're being handed a deck of cards, and they have to deal. They have to play the cards they're dealt with. So they're, everyone's getting difficult hands. So it's not like they came into this event with plenty of lap time and plenty of practice. They kind of just showed up and were like, well, we're <laughs> racing trucks. Or we're racing, you know, with 20-year-old, you know, Ford Cosworth or what have you. So they came in with not much expectations, but great racing still. So. Well, we've seen some aces, but we've also seen some jokers. And let's take us back to Austin, Texas. Brian has the replay. Well, that's right. We had uh, some fantastic racing action in there. I love the fact that we had such variety on the track. Um, we had sort of a David and Goliath 
battle between the Mercedes-Benz race truck and the DB1, but which one was the David and which one was the Goliath is kind of the question here. Lightning had, of course, had a great st start, did exactly what he needed to do, get out in front and take that all-around par, that challenger, which is going to excel on the straights and do a fantastic job there. And his skill is enough to keep that thing in shape during the, the twisty bits. But of course, there's that incident we were talking about earlier with Hard VR and Dino. But really, this is a battle between as polar opposite vehicles as you could imagine. You've got the DB1, there's uh, one of the guys getting a little sideways there. That's Venom getting a little sideways, maybe pushing it a little bit too hard there in that corner. But guys, where else are you going to see a camouflage DB1 going up against a Mercedes Benz race truck? This is Forza, baby. This is what this is all about. I love it. <laughs> Is that, was that a technical term, the twisty bits? That's right, that's the twisty bits, <laughs> that's right, yeah. But yeah, you really saw the strengths and weaknesses of both of these vehicles. The, the Aston Martin excelling on those long straights at Coda, but it didn't matter because the Mercedes-Benz was right there when we got to, you call it, the, the twisty bits. The twisty bits, that's right. I mean, you know, a lot of folks like to go down to Austin, sit there trackside. Where do you want to sit? I don't know, the twisty, twisty bits? bits? Why not? <laughs> Well, Lightning's done it again, and he's been one of our top stars in North America, and we're celebrating season one as the playoffs start 10 days from now. Let's take a look at how it went down in series one in North America. As you see, some incredible racing in North America. The big three of Lightning, Venom, and of course the re reverse grid, but who could forget about Force One and him pushing late? Yeah, Force One coming in late to the party. Here he is, having a little tangle with Lightning, and absolutely dominating late in the season. What could he have done if he had been there throughout? Well, he showed up late to the party, but he got it done. And really in North America, Andy, it was just an open field. So many winners. We had five race winners in North America. We had Lightning. We, here he is driving past on your screen. We had Vanquish. We had Venom, Force One, and Vain. <laughs> and we also saw some wild racing in North America. Hey, when you get aggressive, there's nothing like getting aggressive. What about Billy Sue, though, a man on the rise? Billy Sue, Billy Sue. <laughs> uh, I love this throughout the season. Just my character of the season, 100%, because this guy, uh, first time in the Forza Racing Championship and owning it, just coming out week after week and doing such an impressive job. Well, you love the privateers. You love the newcomers on the scene, but I talked about it. The aggressive driving in North America. We always say rubbing is racing, and Sometimes you just got to pin your ears back and just drive right through that carnage. Yeah, these guys are not afraid of going shoulder to shoulder, making a few sparks, and we've seen that throughout the season. Great racing. Well, you saw, if you want to talk about some of the aggressive racing, AMS McQueen, you could count on him in North America, Andy, week after week, saying, I'm going to mix it up with somebody. I don't know who it's going to be, but if you get my way, you might end up in the wall. I mean, he probably got a little frustrated. Uh, he certainly took some penalties. We saw, uh, I want to say that was in week three, where he took a few penalties. And those, things ty those types of mistakes compound. You make one, and either one of two things happens. Either you battle through it, or another one happens. And for him, another one happened, and another one happened. <laughs> it got a bit contagious out there at, at times. But one consistent is the, uh, uh, really the great driving of Lightning, the man from North Carolina. And he's hanging out with our own Bravo. Rinses. Hey, thanks, Scott. Yeah, talk about consistent. I'm here with Lightning. But before we get into Series 1, i got to talk about that last race. Uh, the you all have noticed, and everyone watching at home will have also noticed, that uh, the desk didn't even talk about you for the whole race because you are about 200 feet ahead the whole time. Tell me, once you, once you got ahead with that Challenger, did you know you were away? Uh, as long as I stayed ahead in the first like quarter of the track, mm -hmm. I knew the Challenger speed would just overcome the Mercedes by a lot. Right. Uh, I just had to make time at the end of the track, and as long as I made time there, he couldn't pass me. Right. You got an American hero, you, a uh, legendary American muscle car in Austin, Texas. It's a, re it's a recipe <laughs> for success. Um, let's get into Series 1, though. We talked about it all season. Uh, you are a guy who 
not only do we expect to see on the podium, but you've been on the podium at every major LAN event that you've been to. How has Series 1 been so far for you? Uh, it's treated me pretty well. Uh, I think I would have been on podium again after the season, but last week I kind of slacked off. Front wheel drive really doesn't suit me that well, mm -hmm. so I didn't really want to put that much effort into it, right. so I just kind of dropped. Right, and going into uh, kind of Series 1 playoffs, something we also hear about on the desk all the time, they just mentioned it, you, were, you got an offensive driving style, right? You can be really aggressive. How do you balance that risk versus reward, especially coming into a big event like the playoffs? Uh, I try to make room where there can be room made. Mm -hmm. So when I come into a corner, I don't like to shove because I could get wrecked as well. Right. So I kind of do a safe, aggressive mm -hmm. thing so I could just make it through the pack as fast as possible. Sure, gotcha. Uh, one thing I also want to ask, uh, first few weeks, even the first three races of week one, right? You and Venom back and forth trading spots. Do you consider that a rivalry or is, is he just another competitor in North America? Uh, I consider him as a rival because in most cars, uh, because I've done a lot of practice with Venom uh, back in the other series. We practiced together, and I got him, I got him up the pace in production cars. Right. So me and him have always had a rivalry. Mm -hmm. Since he's gotten faster in those cars, he's mm -hmm. just picked up speed out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So is, me and him can going to have some good battles. Definitely. Looking forward to seeing that play also through Season 1. Best of luck. Uh, series 1 playoffs, excuse me. Best of luck in those playoffs, and best of luck in these races coming up. Guys, back over to you. Appreciate it, Bravo. And one of the great stories, especially North, not only North America, but the entire community of Forza, a guy that until last year, because of this game, had never really gone anywhere. And I don't mean that as a besmirching way. I mean, this game can take you so many places. He hadn't never been on a plane before until the Invitational last year in New York. And then he went to France and, you know, having the opportunity for all these winnings. And for him, Sometimes a winnings for a younger person means, cool, I'm going to get me a cool car. I'm going to give me some cool clothes. But for him, he's not only, um, you know, racing for himself, but he's also racing for his family. Great story in Lightning. Yeah, you know, such a, such a cool guy, an amazing family, super supportive of his racing, uh, all gathered around. You know, I'm sure they're watching right now. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's been cool the way he's, you know, he spent, spent some of those winnings on, you know, giving them stuff as well. Yeah, it's got to share the sugar, right? You got to share when the, the sugar. sweetness is coming in. Sometimes you got to <laughs> share it. We have a treat here in race number three for the first time ever. We're going to do picks and bands. So as we go through this, we're going to see which uh, cars they picked and which cars they banned. Of course, we're going to do the same with tracks. Uh, this is going to be interesting. You can see the tracks there, Hockenheim. Of course, Bathurst, I hope that happens. Suzuka, one of my favorite tracks, but I'm sure uh, they don't want to be on Suzuka full circuit in the wet. So it's going to be interesting. Yep, there we go. First band comes in from TX3, and surprise, surprise, they don't want to be over Japan on the wet track. That's fine. Get rid of it. As long as we're going to the mountain, I'm fine. <laughs> let's just let's get to the mountain, Mount Panorama. That's where we want to race. Uh, let's go back to the cars, and JSR oh, right. has Banned Andy at number 17 Ford. Well, that's interesting because we still got that VX, V8X supercar track out there in Bathurst. So no Ford Falcon. So the Ford Falcon is out. And let's get ready for the third pick. It's going to ah. be TPR. They've been ruining our day all day long. <laughs> They've been crashing into people, and then they take away Bathurst. Why do we invite them to this stuff? <laughs> Why do we invite them? They come around, and they just screw up our party. <laughs> we, you're uninvited, TPR. Go home. So, so that means we're going to be on Hockenheim Ring, and the final band coming in from F4H is no, the Beetle is out of here. Ah, oh, Tanafaust Beetle, gone. To be honest, it doesn't turn too easily. You need a lot of handbrake to get uh, the right corner. You're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> I, tr I tried to do that challenge, the Tanner Fouts challenge with that thing. It was terrible over on Dubai in that. <laughs> Any surprises, Andy? Uh, you know, we get the chance to see the Maserati. That's a fan favorite for Forza. So I wouldn't say that's a surprise. Maybe the Audi, you know. Uh, I thought maybe if I was going to, perhaps the Audi would have been the one that was going to be picked uh, to be banned. But, uh, nope, we get a treat. We still get the Maserati. We get the Audi Sport Quattro and the BMW. And we've got to remember, that Maserati sounds great. Sounds like rolling thunder. <laughs> sure does. <laughs> yeah. So it comes back again of what car is you going to put each of the teammates in. And, you, of course, they had some chances to practice all of them. But a lot of it, you didn't know the picks in the bands. No, no, exactly. Um, you know, it, it does come back to that, to that strategy again. Uh, we've got the Maserati, definitely a top-end car. We've got some acceleration with the Audi Quattro. And then 
yeah, I mean, what it, what is the what is the final BMW? What is, what kind of characteristic is that? Is that an all rounder? I guess. Yeah, yeah I mean, I guess that's a good way to look at it. A turbo car. I haven't had a lot of experience inside that 1975 BMW 3.0 liter. Let's take a look. Do we have the grid ready for the for race number three? Oh, we have to before I before we get ahead of ourselves here. We have the final results from race number two in, and there is lightning up on top. So. I just totally forgot. I'm having so much fun with the adjudication <laughs> process while those guys are back there working hard. So Hard BR actually getting a five-second penalty. That drops him three spots. And then, of course, Commando. Oh, I gave him a penalty to boot. <laughs> yeah. Took last and a penalty. Ten seconds at that. <laughs> Yikes. Last by a long way. Uh, is, there, is there a score less than zero that we can give Commando? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, you know what? Good for him. I mean, sure, he's just here. Have fun. Now, race number three. Just Go out and have fun. Hey, look, he came 12th, but he's beaten all the TPR drivers out there morally after they banned Bathurst, <laughs> which I'll never forgive them for. <laughs> We're having fun with Commando. He knows how we feel about him. An incredible driver uh, in his own right. Let's go back to Bravo to preview this race number three. Thanks, Scott. That's right. We're headed back to Germany now, heading to Hockenheim. We're going to go ahead and jump into a track preview now, talking about everything that this track offers. 4.57 miles, 2.4 kilometers, 17 turns in total. The one we should really keep an eye on, the best overtake opportunity, and the slowest corner is really going to be that T6 hairpin. And, of course, that track gets so uh, slim and narrow towards the end of the course. Let's go ahead and talk about the three cars that we're going to have here First up is going to be the 1975 BMW, number 25, 3.0 CSL. Uh, that car, of course, winning hundreds of races, also very important victories over Porsche on U.S. soil. The 1986 Audi, number two, Audi Sport Quattro S1, kind of the, the, the legendary vehicle that was really the flag barrier of that four-wheel drive technology. And lastly, as the guy said on the desk, excited to see the Maserati in that pool as well. That's the number 35, part of the single make Trofeo Maserati series, 488 horsepower in there. So it should be an interesting race number three. The TX3 guys in studio only have one more chance to make sure they secure some top spots. We already have some salt being thrown out there by AMS Roadrunner banning a V8 supercar. Shocking. <laughs> well, I mean, I can't drive them. Sure. So someone else <laughs> out there probably can't as well. They are, they're hard to drive, heavy, yeah. no traction traditionally. Of course, no traction here at the Forza RC. So not the, the easiest. I'm not surprised to see it go. Take a look at the grid order here for race number three. Commando is going to be up on front because we're going to flip this on its head. It's going to be a reverse grid going into race number three as we've done all series long. So Zermatt's going to be at second, Dino in third. But now you're going to see Lightning, Rossi, Mitch, Venom, Hard BR, those guys are going to have an opportunity to fight their way through the traffic without carding, causing any carnage here in race number three here on Hockenheim Ring. You've seen the cars. You've seen the tracks. Now you see the grid. What's your initial thoughts? Yeah, uh, I, I'm excited to see who's going to be in the S1 because that's going to be the acceleration. Here we go off the line. Hockenheim, we are full green. Eight laps, 2.84 miles, 17 turns, and we already got a few that are pushing the very track limits going through turn one. That was a TX3 car. They're getting tangled up with Commando. Commando <laughs> now with his chance. Finally, come on, some redemption for the uh, the Welshman. Commando right now in my eyes just looks like a shark, right? Just something's going to happen. It's not going to be good. But right now he's in <laughs> second place, and he knows that for, for JSR to maybe take this thing overall today as a team, he needs to place well starting in that second position. Look at how Commander just walked past Zermatt on the straight. They're in the same car. What has Zermatt done there? Well, no, yeah. Actually, no, they're different cars. That's the yeah. BMW on the straight. We just saw that thing go take off. So actually, it was Commando who started this race in first. Then it was to Zermatt. So Commando got that spot back because earlier on, Zermatt took him in turn one. Remember, it's Good a cool. very light car with the turbo. So you're going to see it spool up very quickly as we see a little bit of wheel spin heading down the back side of this track. Eight laps in total, Commando's out in front. Yeah, you heard me right, Commando is out in front for JSR. As a team, they really have raced well as Zermatt gets on a little bit of the inside there. Davy yeah. Skills though, Davy Skills now in third. He started this race in sixth place, making up three spots in one lap. Now coming through that final sector. Now this is going to be Sox. Now into 15, then into that final turn. Suit curve, a very, very tricky one because of those curves. 
And I think right now what we're seeing is don't sleep on the BMW alley because it's it's got enough speed and it, it's handling really well as we head back to the start finish line for lap number two. So Zermatt in that Audi is going to have his hands full with Davy skills all up ons. Hmm. Here come those BMWs. I think I see three of them in the top four. Yeah, BMW is definitely with an advantage here as we come into lap number two of this final race. Uh, that 2.0 really pushing. Let's go to Brian, who's got some news down on the track. Well, we saw the differences between these two cars. You saw Zermatt in second place overall get in that Audi because he knows it had a lot of acceleration. He wanted to see if he could get in front and stay there, but unfortunately, Commando's in that BMW. It's pure meat underneath that engine, and it definitely just took advantage of it, got him on the straight, and now they're fighting. What was interesting, we were looking at telemetry in the rally car, the Audi S1. Uh, Zermatt was definitely using some handbrake around that tight corner. Driving like a rally car. Yeah, great stuff, Brian, here in lap number two. So really for the folks in the Maserati alley, sort of holding back a, a little bit. I don't know for Lightning if that's going to be enough of a car to make a push through this traffic. Yeah, we're starting to see the BMWs get a leading pack and then kind of everybody else fighting away for fifth position. Uh, right up here we can see three Mazes. Is it three Maseratis it is with uh, Lightning, then Chemical, and two cars up. Is that the F4H Maserati? Yeah. Don't, don't sleep on Lightning. He started this race in last position, now in eighth. So Lightning, you may not think he's on the charge. He is certainly advancing up this order and seems to be the only guy doing that in the Maserati. Yeah, maybe slow and steady here for lap number two. Ooh. There's some contact between Lightning and Chemical. That's going to allow Rossi to go by. JSR mentioned that Audi's just like, uh, let me buy, guys. You guys can use those big cards to slap around a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and head on into lap number three. You can see Lightning hanging out with us here in the studio. Has fallen all the way back to 10th place. Andy putting a full caster curse on him, calling him out in that eighth spot on the charge. He's going to fall back a couple spots, plus two overall through the first two laps as we are here in the third lap. You can see a lot of wheel spin coming out on some of these corners. So Commando's out in front, Davy Skills in second. BMW looking really good right now. It's all about the straight line speed for that Bimmer. You know what I say about BMW drivers? <laughs> whip are we allowed to say that? <laughs> <laughs> are you allowed to finish your thought there? I'm not sure. <laughs> JSR Mitch uh, has done okay, right? So he finished last race what was that second position? Yes. And so he would have started way back 11th place at the beginning of this race, 11th on the grid. He's worked his way forward, eighth so far. Just in that little Audi, the little unremarkable Quattro S1. And uh, so doing a good job, a strong performance from him. And maybe JSR can wrap up this first event. Well, Mitch right now has a rearview mirror full of black and yellow. That's chemical and lightning, both in those Maseratis pushing Mitch in that Audi. They really want by Andy, but there's not a lot of room. Yeah, not a lot of room. I and mean, if the move's going to be made, he actually could make two positions up with one pass there. Now, here comes Lightning. He's going to be alongside Chemical. Chemical's going to lose Ooh. the rear end. And that's going to mean Lightning's going to go around, but Chemical is still there. Look at this. I mean, how, he's driving that Maserati so differently than Lightning. You can make mistakes like that and use an easy pass. Drive. Lightning didn't get it. Yeah, maybe driving it like he stole it as we move into lap number four. Hey, great recovery. You, you, you saw the back end come a little far out, but Chemical able to slot himself back in and hold off Lightning. I loved it. Beautiful. I think that was the move of the night so far for me. Chemical really throwing that thing around and uh, yeah, looking like TUS Chunky was out there. Senna really felt bad for the guy. We talked about it's travel woes coming in last night about 3.30 in the morning. Still hasn't woke up, as, as far as I can tell. He, he Right now, he needs a little lunch break. <laughs> I expect bigger things out of him tonight. Look at this. Up at the front, though, JSR Commando. We ride aboard Davy Skills in a battle for first in the BMWs. Now, as they head towards the Mercedes turn, a very, very deceptive front turn. It comes up on you quick. You need a good exit here. For, for, in my mind, a tricky 9 and 10. These are the technical corners. This is where things get hard, and it's where someone like Davy Skills, so much experience, is going to be able to apply the power coming into Rebel 1 on the right. It's that gravel on the outside of the corner that you have to watch out for. 
two of them just about managing to navigate their way through there and stay very close to one another. And you can see the characteristics of this Beamer. It's really that acceleration that is dominating here at Hockenheim. Dino's in fifth, Chemical is now in sixth. Rossi, they're in seventh. Had to be wrong with Chemical up there on the top because he's in ninth place. Lightning still in 10th, Senna in 11, hard BR. Where have you gone, my friend? You are way back there. Yeah, both the TX3 drivers actually dropping down significant spots. Senna dropping down six, hard BR dropping down four. So they're the losers here in this race, but the winners, let's talk about up early on, just past halfway through, JSR Commando, but not yet to be eclipsed. He's right there, his Davy skills. Well, Commando looking sharp. We talked about the first two races with him. It was, it was a nightmare, to say the least. But you get him some clean air. You let him get out there and run. I think what this shows, Allie, is really the skill gap is so thin between these drivers that we have here. And really, you talk about the top 50 through Series 1, it's really just a bit of unluckiness here and there. That's the difference between being in the podium and being all the way in the back. I agree to, to an extent. I think, yeah, great. I mean, they're all very close to each other, especially when you get the top drivers globally, which is what we're looking at here uh, in this team event. Same time, though, you know, we talk about unlucky races. You do, you know, to be harsh, make your own luck as a driver. Uh, someone like Commando trips up an awful lot, and I do wonder if that's because he puts himself in situations where he can be tripped up. Well, this is huge like for that. JSR, because they have done well in the first two races. Commando. And I don't want to say that maybe was part of the strategy, but that just pop, that thought just popped into my head of he's thinking, all right, you guys handle the first two races. You guys place well on the podium. I'm going to be back here in the back and for the reverse <laughs> grid. Just give me a chance in that BMW with that turbo to, to spin it up. And a little tip of the cap to Davy Skills right now because he's still hanging around here in lap number five. Not too far off, though, is Venom. If these two guys continue to dance here, we're in lap five, about to go into lap number six. Venom is two seconds behind. Now we ride up our TX3 Lightning. Just in front of him is JSR Mitch, so Lightning did get around. So there's Mitch in eighth, Lightning in ninth. One of those battles we've seen is the shadow boxing throughout the championship. Mitch versus Lightning. These two have been fighting out on the global leaderboard, and now this is their first time coming really side by side on track. Love it. Different vehicles, same results, and Mitch in that Audi. I mean, it's just a floating box. That's all that thing is with a, with a little ground effects on a big box. And this time, Lightning is going to push him. You don't want to be on the outside there, though, Lightning. There's no way to get that power down through Parabolica. This is a close old battle, and there's someone in third there sniffing around, and that's Chemical, the bruiser Chemical. Yeah, we've seen Chemical and Lightning change some spots back there in ninth and tenth, but it's really been Mitch, who's now getting caught up in it. And Lightning, can he make this stick finally? They're able to block him out, so Lightning will move up into eighth place. Mitch now on the inside, you can see the power that he has. Just when you have a vehicle that's got some power, you got it light as we just lost that back now with Lightning. Still side by side, Mitch trying to keep that position from Lightning, who is just, he's being somewhat insistent, Scott. Some amazing driving right now from Mitch in that eighth spot here in lap number six, trying to keep Lightning out. Lightning dives oh. in. So Gotta watch close. out for the gravel. These two just line the stern. Mobile One, such a close and difficult place to pass because of the gravel on the outside. Mitch still on the inside of Lightning. He won't disappear. Side by side now. This is that 12, 13, 14. Now through suit curve, and we start in lap seven. If I'm chemical, let these guys do it. I need one opportunity. That's all I need. Well, that's been the battle. I know we're focusing on it because it's near the back, but that's because this is a reverse grid. So this has got a, a lot of stick in to find out how these points are going to be, but it is a team race. Just a couple of car lengths there for Lightning. Nicely hooked up the Nord curb, turn number one. Chemical absolutely bombing it down <laughs> on Lightning, and that's just going to push him wide. Real bruiser stuff there from Chemical. Tough to see. That was the thing I just mentioned earlier. He needs one pass, and he made you pass two cars there in one turn. Let's see if Good he can job by Chemical. hold on, make it stick here in lap number seven. Davy Skills, as we missed, he's now in the lead. So Davy Skills, while we were looking at the back, has now pushed himself out into first. So. 
We have a, a pack of three in the back, and we have a pack of three beamers in the front. Davy Skills out there on the lead in lap number seven. Commando trying to push him. Venom's in the rearview mirror, so the cream has rose to the top, and it's been in the form of that turbo BMW. So much speed. And if yep. you want to know what a fast car looks like on Ford, so if you want to know, <laughs> you know, how do I know I'm going quickly? Have a look at how these drivers are using the BMW 3.0 CSL. It's a car which you can tilt into the corner and just have a real aggressive turning angle mid-corner. Uh, very, very uh, specific way of driving, but also a very fast way. Davy Skills in a redemption race. He's got one more lap to do it. He's got Commando, and this is F4H Venom, who was once two seconds behind and greater. This is now a very close race. Commando is going to lose some rear end grip. That's turn one. The bumps out there. A little bit violent for him. Just fishing around now. Venom going to try for that second place in the podium. Yeah, and Venom knew he had the momentum there going into that turn, especially after Commando got off on the side. That has just opened up some clean air for Davy Skills. Boy, they were one, two, three, very tight. I'm talking about tenths of a second. And just that little bit of driver air by Commando has allowed Davy Skills the breathing room. And let's see Venom trying to come on the outside. That's not going to hold. So Commando right now, really the battle is between second and third place. F4H hasn't had a great showing team-wise here today. But JSR desperately needs these points. As Here you see Venom, Venom go to the inside. Venom throwing it in there. Massive lunge. He was never going to be able to hold that in on brakes. But uh, just showing Commando that he's got the intent, I guess. He's got one <laughs> sector left to do it. Hashtag intent here in lap number eight. <laughs> Commando, he's starting to get a little bit of space from Venom after the wild maneuver. And I mentioned that oh, 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 there's touch a here. A big touch, and I think Venom's just going to left off, let off. He know he made a mistake. He's going to let Commando keep that spot. And I, I think no need for a penalty there. I mean, he gave up the spot, didn't take advantage of it. Especially with no one really in reach in that fourth and fifth spot. So smartly done by Venom, not getting want to get that five-second penalty that he knows he can push him down the grid. So Davy Skills is going to end up taking this one. Commando in second, Venom in third. And Rossi, so JSR with another good showing here. And this time, it's not Mitch, it's Commando. But when you talk about team racing, really, that was Mitch doing his job. He had the Audi back there mixing it up with Lightning. And when you talk about, you know, when you, this is team racing, he knew he wasn't going to have an opportunity to get up to the podium. He just said, Guys, I'm going to hang back here with Lightning, and I'm just going to give him absolute hell for these eight laps. <laughs> it, was, it was good stuff from Mitch. You know, as, as we've been seeing, JSR doing a great job, race number one, race number two. Race number three, they were always going to be at a disadvantage because they've done so well before, but he's done well, pushed through the pack. Davy Skills, though, how long have we waited to see him on the top step of the podium? Yeah, I mean, we, we've seen him before. Everyone knows who Davy Skills is. He's been a, a, a champion winner here, and he's won major contests here in Forza. Uh, but back up at the top, I'm glad TPR is happy to see that. And I know Davy Skills has been a long time since he's been on this podium. I'm going to be happy for him. Of course, he gets to the podium with the reverse grid. I don't want to besmirch him being in the top spot, but when you're, when you're going up against Commando, and I'm not trying to besmirch Commando, but there is a different tier than the guys that we've seen run up front for the first two races. I mean, it's so frustrating with Commando sometimes because we we know that on leaderboard challenges, he's he so can fast. Be up there. He's yeah, top three in the world probably sure. in terms of throwing a lap in, but he comes out in the Forza RC and just yet to find his comfort zone, yet to look, yet to have that kind of like relaxed posture. You know, when he's driving, he always looks a little bit tense, always a little pushing too hard, not pushing enough. That BMW was the fastest car on track, right? And he still beat out F4H Venom. And Venom started the race in ninth, so he had a lot more track to make up. But, you know, I don't want to discredit Commando. He did still get that BMW to the front and on a podium. That was the fastest car on the track, and it needed to be, and he got it there. And Venom's no slouch. No slouch. We've seen him in NA. Did TX3 make a strategy mishit there by not putting Lightning or Hard BR in the BMW. Yes. Y in I a mean, word. Right? Yes. yes. You I know, agree. Uh, I Cost think they needed, points. They needed, more, they needed more punch in that BMW. I yeah. completely agree. You got to know. 
You knew, I mean, of course, we had five cars. There was going to be some bands. There was going to be some picks. But TX3, maybe at some times, is more of an individual team. It kind of showed there. Let's take a look at the provisional results through race number three. Davy Skills on top. Commando in third. Vin, excuse me, in second. Venom in third. And there is Rossi in fourth. And I mention that because JSR, once again, two drivers in the top five. Awesome to see. Awesome. We've, you've got to think they've done well here. We'll get a countdown of all the points very soon, I'm sure. And you've got to think JSR have done a great job. The people who can maybe challenge them are going to be TX3, who have also been consistently up there. And also on the provisional results, it looked like Chemical eked out Lightning. So Chemical was you know, behind Lightning at one point. So I think something must have happened in those last lap. We saw that bruiser of a move <laughs> from Chemical. I'm going to call him a bruiser uh, <laughs> all night long. Uh, we saw him just absolutely send it on turn two on Lightning and uh, just really keep him out of the way. I thought it was a little bit much, a little bit brash maybe, and I wonder whether the marshals are going to have a look at that. Well, if you guys are sitting there watching and you say, man, I am in the mood now to do some racing. We have some cool bounty hunter events. That's right. Our own John Heinhaw is challenging you to face him on Le Mans. I've watched Heine a few <laughs> times backstage, just kind of practicing, playing forts for a little bit, having a go. He's and not bad. He, he's, he's, like, genuinely good. He's fast. It's scary to see how quick he is. So uh, get on out there and see if you can beat his time, and uh, good luck to you if you manage it. Well, I, I didn't fare well in the Tanner Faust Challenge. But Heinhaw, I'm coming for you, man. I, that's, that's all <laughs> I can tell you. Uh, let's... Hey, maybe one of the fastest guys we have on our team. Let's go over to Brian Eckberg with a replay of race number three. Love that race three. There's a lot to talk about. A, a kind of contrast from race two where you saw the Aston Martin going up against the racetrack. Here in race three, we saw cars of the same type battling it out on the track. Let's take a look at the start. You guys can see how the action went down. These cars battling for position. We talked about Zermatt trying to get that early lead and take advantage of that Audi's acceleration. But really here, I think, Ali, you were talking about this earlier, the battle between Chemical and Lightning and eventually Mitch, who was driving the wheels off that Audi, making it seem like a car that was of a completely different class. He really kept up the fight with Chemical and Lightning in a really compelling way. And for a while there, you can see here, it looked like Mitch was actually pulling away, but Chemical getting out of shape there, but you see him come back in frame here, and he's still ahead of Lightning. It's some amazing, really aggressive driving. You know he wasn't happy in that moment, but he really kept it together there. So well done by Chemical and Lightning, some great stuff there. But in the end, we saw the CSLs, those BMW cars, really taking advantage of that power on a track that values high speed. These guys really putting a lot in it. Here's that moment where we had some contact between Venom and Commando. I love this. Pure racecraft, pure gentleman racers letting him keep the position, slowing down. I love that kind of sportsmanship. Maybe that wouldn't happen in the playoffs, but it's <laughs> happening today. And there you go, the CSL's going across the line, showing their dominance on Hockenheim. Did you see the TX3 Beamer out there anywhere? I don't even remember seeing it during the race. We, what we saw on the track map was that some of those guys were way far behind. We didn't yeah. exactly see what happened to them, but something happened that kept those guys way far away from the back of the pack. Well, a good race three, and we talked about North America, and we were celebrating how well they did in Series 1, but you saw a lot of the cream of the crop there in Europe. Let's take a look at uh, Series 1 in EMEA. And we had some amazing racing over in Europe. Lege, Box, A6, 7, Roadrunner. It feels like I'm naming off an all-star team. But the head honcho was Lage with six wins. Yeah, dominant stuff from somebody who looks so at home on a racetrack in race cars. This is a, a real motorsport driver uh, coming out and just showing his class here in EMEA. It didn't matter what vehicle you threw at him, <laughs> what situation you put him in. He looked really good, whether he was in the F40, you put him in a Civic, you put him in a C7 Corvette. Lage with six big wins, but is there any challengers? Is there any challengers? There is a ton of challengers. Let's start with TPR Box. He spent half the season on podiums, six times, racing in Lage's shadow in weeks one and two, but failed to capitalize in week number three. This is a guy that is just a magnet for bad luck. And maybe you could say the same about Roadrunner, defending champ who got it done last year. He was second at the Invitational. It looked like it was going to be such a promising Series 1. He hung in there every time he could.
started slow but finished strong. Finally, in week four, he would get himself a podium. And don't forget about Mitch. Yeah, Mitch, the plucky young upstart. My favorite story from EMEA, this guy just flying up the field, week on week getting better results, and fighting with drivers who we thought were invincible. Well, that's what you can say about Europe there in EMEA. It is a stacked pack, and I'm talking about drivers that were all over the place. Lage, I know how dominant he is, but we had six, six different winners win, but they only won one apiece. Seemed like someone was up every week to challenge Lage. And I think once they get here to Seattle, once you get on that LAN environment where you can reach out, put your hand on someone, you can look them in the eye, that's where we're gonna really find out who's gonna be the champion. It's a different animal. I mean, these guys are gonna be traveling around the world, playing on a screen they haven't played before. You mentioned it earlier, they're out of their element, folks. So it's going to be a different animal. One person, Roadrunner, is successful in that type of environment. And we saw that last year at Le Mans. You make all those changes, you shift everything around, and then on top of all of it, you add some massive money prizes to the top of that. That is a recipe for some interesting racing. 75K to come out to Seattle, hang out, do a couple driving. That's not bad, guys. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll come drive your car. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> In short, no, you're not touching any of my vehicles. <laughs> Uh, boy, we've had some uh, amazing racing thus far today. I know it's been a lot of fun, but you've really gotten a taste of what's it going to be like going into to the playoffs because these are guys that it doesn't matter if it's exhibition or if it's the real thing. That intensity, Ali, is, is there full time. It is. There's no turning it off. I mean, we've got some guys in the studio with us today. We've got other drivers around. We've call, we're calling this a fun event, a fun team event. But everyone's sweating. They all want to. They all want to win. They always do. And that's what makes this fun. If there wasn't that killer instinct in every one of the drivers, we wouldn't have the incredible racing we have. Well, it's been an amazing series one, and the playoffs are only ten days away, guys. And the green lights are on, we're racing. Ooh, a big altercation there. Whew. Pure speed right now. Well, if that doesn't get you fired up 10 days from now in Seattle, these guys are going to get it on for 75K, and it just keeps getting better and better. It does. Every single time these drivers come out, they're fighting more, they're fighting harder, and uh, I can't wait to see the playoffs now. You can feel it in the air. It's coming. I, I can feel it. I can sense it. Seattle, they're coming here. And whoever takes this, really this first playoff is going to be the one that has the momentum going into Series 2 that gets started again just a month from now. So if you haven't gotten involved yet, there's still an opportunity for you to, to be able to get in there. Well, let's take a look at the final results that we have here in today's racing. That's race number three. Nothing to pass out there. No penalties. Hallelujah. We finally done it. Davy Skills uh, out there in front. Commando second, able to hold on as Venom was really the guy that had the big moving. It was chemical then, not getting penalized for that move. I guess the adjudicator saying, let him race, <laughs> let, him, let him go for it. A little bit rough with Lightning, though, so I wonder how he'll feel about that. Uh, good racing all the way up and down the pack. And as you said, that battle for the lead, Davy Skills, pure class. Yeah, hard BR was, you know, would love to find out what really happened to him during that race because I, I, I don't even like, I keep asking. Who from TX3 was in the BMW? Do we still know? I think it was hard BR. Yeah, so he had to have something happen to yeah, him clearly. in the middle of the pack clearly. that caused him to fall all the way back. And that car proved that if, if you weren't running well with that, you weren't going to have any shot at the podium. That vehicle just ran away from the pack. It did. Uh, it was definitely the sprinter. This is the hair of the group. 
And uh, if you got caught up with all the sort of blocking cars like the Maserati, then you could be in real trouble in terms of optimizing on its speed. Well, let's take a look at the overall results of today's racing here this afternoon. Of course, we've got much more coming up tonight. And it is going to be with 86 points. JSR, really no surprise. Look at TPR there. And, and TX3 tied at 60. And then F4H, at, which beside Venom this afternoon, really had nothing to write home about in Revs and Dino. Yeah, I mean, Dino actually is somebody who's got great momentum at the end of the championship. He's been getting faster and faster. Revs maybe a little bit of a wallflower in 2018. Uh, but between the two of them, uh, tonight, on this day in history, not able to pick, ho pick up the points. So Sienna with just 11 points as well for TX3. Uh, they, have to, they have to do better. Hard BR's got to do better. Really was surprised, Andy, to not see better finishes at a hard BR here this afternoon. You know, I'm not... I, I I don't necessarily think that today's performance has any ch doesn't change any scope of the, the entirety of what they've accomplished so far this season. TX3 is also the number one team on the global leaderboards as well. Today, clearly for fun, they came in here to travel. They wanted to be part of the experience. I don't think it takes anything away from what they've already done. Well, let's show you some more about what's going on in, in the playoffs. You can see the provisional driver seating. Hard BR is... Your number one seed in, in group one there. There's Lage in group two, Wesley in group three. So really Latum, very well represented at the top. Yeah, there's going to be some real difficult groups out there. I'm just having a look, flicking down <laughs> them. I, I think maybe so if, you many look names. At, if you look at group number three, that's, I think, the most stacked for me. Uh, you know, with Rossi, Seven, Venom, but then there's Force One and Billy Sue in there as well. These two guys can't believe it. They're seeing it for the first time as well. Uh, very, very close indeed. Let's take a look at the uh, structure. I mean, when you look at this, the, the seedings real quick before we do that, the guys I look for is like, okay, Virus, <laughs> you know, I want to stay away from his group. He's, he's a bit of a uh, – I'll be honest with you. This group, too, is scary because of Virus and McQueen. Those are two guys that race very hard. Oh, they sure do. I mean, but look at this. You can't forget Group 1. They've got Hard BR and Lightning in the same group. <laughs> That's what they're probably discussing over there. <laughs> they're in the same group. And Box is in the middle of them. We talk about this, this the playoffs. It's, it's going to be very exciting. Let's look at the structure of, you can see Group 1. You got those 11 drivers. Group 2's got 11 drivers. Group 3 with 12. 24 is going to move on to the semifinals, and that's where we're going to work down to on the 17th. We'll have 12 drivers there in the finals, and those are the guys who are going to have a real opportunity to get into the money. Yeah, these are the ones who are going to be fighting for their share of that $75,000. The first money we're giving away in the Forza Racing Championship 2018. If you've missed out on this event, there will be many more later in the year. Well, you sit there and you watch it, and you're like, you, you instinctively feel like, hey, I'm just as fast as these guys. These guys look like they're just as fast as me. Well, there's an opportunity. You get out there, you, you get involved, and hopefully we'll see you in Series 2. Let's go back over to Bravo, who's still hanging out with the guys. Thanks, guys. Down here on the floor with both Lightning and Hard BR. After just seeing the group re reveal for the first time, uh, I want to hear from both of you. Just give me your initial thoughts on what those groups look like. Which one's a group of death? Do we have more than one? What do you think? Uh, group 1 and 2, pretty much group of death. From what I can see, it's going to be rough. Yeah, I think the same. Probably the one and two are the most hard ones. Uh, we didn't expect having so much people in the same lobby. Good, at least, you know. Almost dead. All of them yeah. are dead groups, you know. Uh, tell me, also in that group, both of you being in the same group, uh, of course, anytime you have an individual race with teams, right, it's tough to have opportunities where teammates are kind of taking each other out. Does that, is that kind of on your mind through the races? Uh, it just means we can respect each other more and make less happen, as in crashing. We just respect each other a lot more. Yeah, I agree with everything he said. It's basically that. Uh, tell me, I think $75,000 up for grabs, right? 15000 for first. Which one of you guys has taken it? Uh, it's going to be a hard decision. I mean, there's a couple other guys that have contender for that fifteen grand. I mean, it's a lot of money on the line. I was talking to you earlier. You were way more confident about taking that fifteen grand. I, I think I think I think you got a great shot. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we just need to race and see. I uh, hope I can get the max as I can. You know, so that's that's what it is. 
Uh, of course, only about a, 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 a what about a week and a half of final practice before the Series One playoffs. Best of luck to both of you guys. Of course, we're going to still have you in studio with us on this show here for more racing this evening. But for now, back over to the desk. Appreciate it, Bravo. Yeah, six o'clock tonight here in Seattle. We do it all over again. And JSR is already foaming at the mouth. Craviator says the A team is coming through next. That's going to be South Veeps and Craviator tonight representing JSR team. He's calling them Team A. <laughs> uh, after uh, that, we've had some great time. It's so good to have you here, Andy. And, of course, Allie. Yeah, okay. It's, it's okay <laughs> to have you here. We'll be back at 6 o'clock. Thanks so much to Plantronics and the Rig Series. Play C, all the great crew we have here. We'll be back at 6 o'clock to rock and roll once again for those folks out there in North America.